Number 69. Using the disassociation constant, KD, which equals 3.4 times 10 to the negative 15th, calculate the equilibrium concentrations of the zinc ion, Zn2+, and the hydroxide ion, OH-, in a 0.0465 molarity solution of ZnOH4 2 minus. Okay, so a couple of things here. If we're working with disassociation constants, specifically KD, we're talking about a complex ion. And a complex ion is basically when a metal comes together with the polyatomic, and sometimes it's ammonia, but not in this case. But generally, it's a metal coming together with the polyatomic to make a one big ion that has a charge. And in this case, it's the ZnOH4 2 minus. The metal came together with the hydroxide ion. They have an overall charge, and that's a complex ion. Now, when we're dealing with KD's disassociation, that means that the complex ion will break down. We are not forming it. We are breaking it down. And we break it down into its ions. And thank you very much for telling me that it's zinc 2 plus and OH minus, so we don't have to worry about finding the charges. So let's just write the balanced equation. We're starting with the complex ion, and we're breaking it down into its two components. So Zn, OH4, 2 minus. It has a charge, so I know that that's aqueous. This is breaking down, so double arrow, we're talking about K values, into the two ions. Zn2 plus, that has a charge, so that's aqueous. And the hydroxide, OH minus, that has a charge, that's aqueous. Just make sure that you balance your equation. There's four hydroxides on the left, so I just have to put a four here. Okay, now where do we go from here? Well, we need to use a, the KD, so I know that I need to get equilibrium values, and they do want us to calculate equilibrium values, but they do give us this value right here. Now they're saying that we have a 0 0.0465 molar solution of this complex ion. And that's all that they started us off with. Keyword started us off with. So this is your initial concentration. And remember, anytime that you have an initial concentration, we have to use the lovely ice table. Oh yeah, bringing that back. So ice it out. Here we go. ICE, I stands for initial. Initially, we started off with a 0 0.0465 molar concentration for our complex ion. But they didn't tell us that we started off with any zinc or the hydroxide, so zero and zero. C stands for change. Find the zero side because you could only go up from there. So that means that the change for the zinc has to be positive and the hydroxide has to be positive, and we're going to be dropping our concentration from our complex ion. But we don't know by how much, so we're just going to label it x. Follow your um, coefficients. There was no coefficient in the front here, so that's just a 1, so this would be minus x. No coefficient in front of the zinc, that's just 1, so plus x. But now there's 4 OHs, so I have to plus 4x. The coefficients have to match. E, bring it all together, equilibrium. So this would be 0 0.0465 minus x. 0 plus x is just x, and 0 plus 4x is just 4x. I'm going to bring this over to the side because now we know what's coming up next. We use our equilibrium values to plug it in for our k expression. And in this case, we're just dealing with kd. But any k value is always the same. It's always products divided by reactants. Remember, only aqueous and gases are allowed, but they're all aqueous here, so we're all good. We have two at the top and one at the bottom. And maybe I'll just bring this a little bit down. Okay, let's go for it. So we have zinc two plus coming up at the top here. We have the OH minus, and keep in mind that this one needs to be raised to the fourth because you have a four there. And then we have the zinc hydroxide 4, 2 minus on the bottom. Let's just see what our numbers are. The KD is going to be the 3.4 times 10 to the negative 15th. The zinc is going to be the X. The hydroxide is going to be the 4X. 
And this is going to be the 0 0.0465 minus x. Now hold the phone, because anytime that you have a number minus x when you're doing your k expressions, you're probably going to have the quadratic. We always like to assume first before we do any heavy little, you know, heavy level math. So what we're going to do is we're going to just state that since this KD is so small, I mean, it's times 10 to the negative 15th, that means that at equilibrium, you should mostly have all reactants. And if you started with all reactants and you're ending with mostly reactants, that means that this drop it's probably not even a drop at all. It's probably just a small dip, so small that you probably don't even see it. So you can assume that this minus X is so negligible that we probably don't even see it. At the end, we're going to do the 5% rule just to see if we assumed correctly. So let's do the math. 3.4 times 10 to the negative 15th equals, we have the two on the top, one on the bottom. So we have x, 4x to the fourth, divided by 0 0.0465. Let's quickly change this 4x to the fourth. Just remember that 4x to the fourth just means that you have four 4x's times together. So maybe I'll do that up here. So I have 4x times 4x times 4x times 4x. So we will times the fours first. Four times four times four times four is 256. And then you just pick up four X's. So that's X to the fourth. So this can just be simplified by saying that this is 256 X to the fourth. Now I'm just going to cross multiply here. So this times this, and then I'm just gonna group together um, these values up at the top. So I'm just bringing one more X together. So let's see, we got 3.4 times 10 to the negative 15 times 0 0.0465. I get 1.581 times 10 to the negative 16th equals 256. I'm pulling together one more X. So this is X to the fifth. Let's divide by 256 on both sides, that will cancel out this value. So now we're just left with something with X to the fifth. So this number divided by 256, I get a pretty big decimal. So I'll try to give some value 6.17578. That should be good enough times 10 to the negative 19th. And now, since we're raising this to the fifth power, I would just have to fifth root that, but I have no idea how to do that on the calculator. So I just do it the other way in which I just raise this to the inverse value. So this is five over one. So I could raise it to the one over five or essentially raise it to the one fifth, but I will do it on the other side as well. And this will cancel out. And then I'll just be left with X equals. So let's see, 6.17578 times 10 to the negative 19th, raise that to the one fifth. Um, okay, 2.28 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, now let's just see if we can do the 5% rule, right? The 5% rule, is when you take your X value and you divide it by your initial concentration. So that's 0 0.0465 and just times it by 100. If this whole thing comes out to five or less, we assumed correctly and we are good to go. But if it doesn't, then we got to go back into the quadratic equation. So this divided by 0 0.0465 times 100. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. We get like a half of a percent. So we're good. So I'm going to keep this and the unit for X is molarity. Okay, so we check on the 5% rule. 
Now let's just answer the questions. We want to find the equilibrium concentrations of both the zinc and the hydroxide. So I go back to the equilibrium, and they're looking for the zinc and the hydroxide. So the concentration of the zinc, that was just X. And we just found out what X was. So that's the same, 2.28 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. And now for the hydroxide, the OH minus, we stated that it was 4X. So I'm going to have to plug in the 2.28 times 10 to the negative fourth and just times it by four. Whatever that number is, that's the hydroxide concentration. So 2.28 times 10 to the negative fourth times four, and I get 9.12. 9.12 times 10 to the negative fourth, and that's molarity. And here are both of your concentrations. And that is the end of the question. That was fun. Ice table's coming back. Yay. <laughs> anyway, I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I hope you all are having a great day. Let's keep studying hard. And good luck on your future tests and quizzes. I'm rooting for you. All right? Okay, bye-bye.